test time. So I am going to be tested for a rare um, neurological conditions um, called hereditary ataxias. I'm going to be tested for up to a thousand different genes or better um, by gene DX and um, here we go. My test arrived on Christmas Eve. This test was ordered and sent to me by my genetics doctor, so it is a prescription. So on December 28th, I um, did my test um, as well as one of my other family members and we got it sent in um, through FedEx. So now it's just the waiting period of the results coming back. So I could use prayers, positive vibes, um, whatever. To finally get the results um, I've been waiting for because it's just been a long drawn out um, experience and maybe and hopefully it'll confirm my clinical diagnosis as having an actual diagnosis um, this year has been the year of trying to find the answers and um the very first year it was discovered that i had cerebellar atrophy which is a shrinkage of my cerebellum and this has been known to be 
in my family through generations, but many people just insisted that I was normal, I was okay. Um, I did not have cerebellar degeneration for a number of years because they thought my MRI was normal, but they were wrong. Um, so I've had cerebellar atrophy for a number of years <laughs> um, before finding that finding out that I have it I, I have it this year so it's just been a long drawn out journey and hopefully this test will provide me with the um, answers that I need hey everyone I am making this video because the day is coming and I'm hopefully going to receive the answers I've been waiting on um, for a long time. Um, on December 28th, 2020, I did uh, genetic testing by Gene DX, who specializes in diagnosing rare and ultra rare diseases. Um, I was tested for up to a thousand different genes um, causing ataxia. Um, and Wednesday the 3rd, I go in and meet with my genetics team because my results came back. And um, they are gonna go over the results with me. Um, they are now, I don't know nothing yet until Wednesday, but um, they're going to review it with me. Um, I, I don't know anything about what came back as of yet, but I spoke to my genetics doctor, and it sounds like they did come up with something, um, the test results. So... Um, as I was told that they need to explain the underlying science behind it and the implications. So I am a little anxious but nervous. Um, but I hopefully will ha have an answer uh, as to what, um, you know, my gene variant causing my type of ataxia um is what they're gonna do is we're gonna meet we have an appointment on that date they're gonna explain to me what came back um They're going to give me details about it. They're probably going to give me the prognosis um, of the disease um, if it came back. Um, they're probably going to give me um, what my future outcome is going to be with the disease. Um, if the disease is progressive, all this, all kinds of different source of information in regards to the disease that was found through my genetic testing, okay? Um, so that's what I'm kind of expecting. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, back in 2005, I was genetically tested by Athena at that time. Um, a long time ago, but I think I was genetically tested for the wrong variations of types of ataxias. Um, 
because whatever came back, it came back inconclusive at the time. Otherwise, everything was normal. Um, but the gene that came back was inconclusive for PRKCG. And um, it's responsible for causing spinal cerebellar ataxia type 14. Um, and they weren't sure as if I had that type of ataxia at the time since it came back um, uncertain for that um, gene variant that causes that form of ataxia. Um, but since going through the round the second time, I found out it was recategorized as negative. So my entire test from 2005 was irrelevant as to causing my type of ataxia. And it was mainly focused on um, diagnosing repeat diseases, um, which are um, repeat disorders or repeat expansion types of ataxias. Um, so this test took a different route and I believe it's more so geared toward point mutations and things like that rather than the repeat mutations. Um, so it was like a different category category of types of ataxias in um, um, different genetic um, category. Uh, so um, yeah, so that's that. Um, I will keep you all updated as to what's going on um, and what came back. So. Um, I think that's all I wanted to discuss, but anyways, hope you all have a good day and happy rare disease day. Um, I hope you have a good one and raise awareness, um, do whatever, um, and awareness is important, so. Bye now. Hi everyone. So today is the day I am going to receive my genetic test results for ataxia. And I'll let you know what they are at the very end. Hello everyone. Um, I am making this video because I did receive my genetic test results. And... I wanted to share with you um, what came back. It came back at, as likely pathogenic or, and it wasn't surprising because it was what we suspected all along, you know. Um, the variant that was found um, is likely pathogenic to be caused um, a type of ataxia called episodic ataxia type 2, even though it did match my clinical diagnosis. It's finally on paper, you know, it's finally officially diagnosed, and the diagnosis wasn't surprising at all um, because what came back did match my clinical diagnosis, which was a good thing. Um, so I have a variant within the gene CACAN1A, um, and it's dominant inheritance pattern, which means a 50-50 chance of passing it a parent to child. And obviously I, um, I did inherit it from one of my parents. Okay, and... I learned today that some individuals can still have the 50-50 chance of passing it, um, as they explained to me, and not even have the symptoms, and still have that 50-50 chance of passing it to their child, um, in some cases as well. So that was new news to me. Um, I did not know that information before, but... Um, the variant was 
C dot A three five C seven T P dot R two seven nine C and it's within the gene C A C A N one A and its dominant inheritance pattern and it's likely to be pathogenic um, for episodic ataxia type 2. Um, I was told it was likely pathogenic um, rather than it being absolutely pathogenic, um, which means being significant enough to cause the symptoms of episodic ataxia type 2. Um, but I can like call back my genetics team in like two years from now and see if the likely pathogenic move to absolutely pathogenic. So if there has been any change or new discoveries within that uh, gene change or variation or variant, um, I can always call back at a later date to find out more information if there has been new discoveries uh, about that variant. So Anyways, that was my result. It wasn't new news, so <laughs> I just wanted to give you all an update, though, on what was found, and um, take care now. Bye.